Okay, we've seen some things that happened in this example up here with the dice, some relationships between probabilities that allowed us to potentially calculate probabilities a lot, a lot more efficiently than having to count all of the different possible outcomes. Let's formalize this into the probability axioms. The first axioms concern the set of events that we're talking about. So definition. So probability, so a probability model consists of a triple. So we have to specify three things to have a probability model. And the way that I'm gonna express those three things, so it's a triple, omega, F, P, script F, capital P. Okay, the triple is omega is a sample space. It's the easy part. So that's just a set. F is going to be what's called a sigma field on omega. P is going to be a probability probability measure. P is a function from F to zero one. Okay, it assigns probabilities to every possible event. Okay, so sample space, this is the set of all possible outcomes. The sigma field is the set of relevant events. So events of interest and P is this is defining the probabilities of those events. Okay. So we know what a sample space is. It's a set. Let's define a sigma field. So a sigma field F over omega. satisfies three axioms. So F is a collection of subsets of omega. Remember, collection of subsets of omega, subsets of omega, those are what we call events. And they have to satisfy these three axioms first. Right, this sigma F1 is axiom one, is that it has to contain omega. Axiom two is that if it contains an event A, it has to contain its complement as well. And finally, if it contains a collection of events, it has to contain their countable union. So up above, we saw that that's true for the power set, right? We saw that the power set contains the sample space, it contains complements, and it contains, in this case, intersections. Um, and you could also see that it also will contain unions. Okay, unions and intersections are related to one another as we'll see in exercises. Okay. But this is what we need. And then once we have that, um, we can define a probability measure. Okay, so, given a set 
omega, that's our sample space, and a sigma field F over omega, a probability measure P, which is a function from subsets in F to zero one, satisfies three, three axioms. First, well, it's PM1, probability measure axiom one, is that the probability that it assigns, so F is the set of all things that have a probability assignment. So everything in F has a probability assignment. The first is that the probability of omega is one. The second is that every probability is bigger than zero. Technically, it's kind of obvious because I've I've forced the uh, range here to be between zero and one. I don't have to technically do that. Um, in a more advanced course, I would probably define it more generally, but there's no point to do that. Um, but I will still state this as an axiom. And then for disjoint subsets, so for a countable disjoint set of events, the probability of the countable union of events is the sum of the probabilities. We're gonna see what the consequences of this are and how it all applies in plenty of examples, but these are, this is how, this is, the whole, this is everything. So this essentially tells us the entire uh, domain of discourse for this entire course, everything is gonna be built on these axioms um, and quite a bit comes from them. Let me, uh, let me give um, some intuition for why these, where, why these axioms make sense, okay? All right, starting with the sample space, the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes, okay? So let's keep that in mind. Now let's think about the sigma field F. F is the set of relevant events. What do I mean by relevant? Relevant means it's the stuff we care about. It's the events we care about. So let's think about it. The first axiom here is saying that we care about whether or not something happened could be anything, but we do care if something happened. Okay, so that's pretty pretty easy, pretty obvious, is that we're saying these are all the possible outcomes. If one of those outcomes happens, we care. Okay, doesn't tell us much, but we care. Next one's saying, okay, suppose we care about a particular event A, right? I care whether or not a seven is rolled in, in crafts then I care whether or not, I care if that event does not happen as well. So if, if I care about A, I care about A complement. And of course that matter, that, that makes sense, especially you know, in, the, in the example we have of craps is that if I placed a bet on seven, then I definitely care if seven is rolled. But if I placed a bet on seven, I also care if seven is not rolled because I lose, right? So I care whether I win, I care whether I lose. And then this is saying, if I care about a bunch of different things. So if I care if, if each of these individual events occur, then I care if you tell me that one of the events occurs because the union is just saying that one of the events occurs. So now supposing that that's what the Sigma field is, it's the, it's the events I care about. The probability distribution is assigning a probability to every event I care about. So it's saying, how likely is everything I care about? Okay. And, okay. 
The first is to say how likely is the sample space is is the, is this is the how likely is it that something happens, right? I've well, I've defined omega to be the set of all possible outcomes. So if that's really all possible outcomes, it better happen 100% of the time. And that's what this axiom is saying. The next one is pretty obvious by our interpretation of P, which is just to say that everything has to happen at least 0% of the time. I mean, that's just, uh, there's really not much more to say about it, but it does, it, it, it does need to be said. And then this, this last one is to say, okay, if I'm counting how often disjoint events occur, so on each roll of the dice and I have disjoint events, at most one of them can occur any given time, right? So the probability that one of the, at least one of those events occurs is just the sum of the probabilities. That's how I count their probabilities, okay? That's where these axioms come from. Um, and we'll see that these turn out to be pretty reasonable. Uh, you know, we, we get, we have some interpretation of them as we just discussed. And we see that these give us a very powerful framework to answer a lot of questions in statistics and in other applications. So we're going to um, see how these, see how these axioms apply in a few different situations um, coming up next.